Abram versus John Beast, most feared challenge. And I'm uh, going to be breaking this down. Really good little gameplay here for these two guys. Uh, this is Abram's, I think it's his first live event. John Beast al already, I uh, believe, at this point, I think he only has one belt. Uh, but he will uh, end up making a run for something here in this, in this tournament. So starting out, Abram is going to be on offense first. And John is going to be on defense. One of the things uh, I like to point out just kind of in general, is the playbooks that these guys are rocking. So Abram is going to be rocking, I believe, Bears on offense, and then John Beast is going to be rocking Colts. So Bears at this point in the Madden season, a little bit less meta, but honestly really, really effective. And the main reason why people are rocking this Bears playbook is due to the fact that you have the tight slots formation, the tight slots halfback week formation, which is super, super good. And then you also have the Bunch Strong Offset. Now, Bunch Strong Offset, new formation added this year and, uh, and really, really a good formation that is going to be able to pretty much be almost, I call it the best standalone formation in the game. So going to get into this here. And again, John is, let's see here, what's going on with the kickoff? Let's get into the game action. I don't know if they had like a technical difficulty or what. But yeah, yeah, Abram's definitely in, in, uh, in Jets, I think, so. John uh, is going to be in Kansas City, uh, and John is going to be in 6-1, I believe. Now, at this point in the year, also, Joe Montana has Hot Route Masters, so he is a key player for this tournament uh, because he is one of the first quarterbacks to get Hot Route Master, and he is going to be really, really important. So getting into this, John Beast is going to be in the 6-1. Now, notice here that John is pinching his defensive line, and he's going to crash these guys all to the interior and essentially try to create a four-man disengage rush here, and then typically with this defense, you're going to get a double flat or a double Mabel where these linebackers are going to be in a 10-yard curl flat. The uh, outside linebackers are going to be in, in 5 to 10-yard curl flats. The corners are going to be in 30-yard cloud flats. And then these guys are either going to be in inside quarters or halves, essentially protecting the deep area of the field. So the way that you want to beat this defense is really attacking in kind of this square. Um, but as you can see, obviously, John Beast is going to have his user in there. So those are some things to kind of look at here just in terms of the general chess match. One of the things that 6-1 struggles against is bubble screens. Abram's going to call a little RPO bubble right out of the gate, just kind of see how John Beast is going to be defending this. And right there really was honestly not terrible defense from John. Another really underrated thing is John is not backing these corners off. So he's leaving them at their default base line depth. He's not individually backing them off. What that's going to mean is that they are not going to get as deep as possible. Now, right here, Abram goes to tight slots. This is why you run this formation. Love this route combination right here. Again, what Abram is anticipating, this is such an important point when trying to really take your Madden game to the next level, is understanding why they're doing what they're doing. Why go to tight slots half back week and why call this route combination? The main reason that he's going to be calling this route combination is because he is anticipating that this defender is going to be on a curl flat. This defender is going to be on a 30-yard cloud, 30-yard cloud, and curl flat. So where does Abram want to attack? Look at the route combination. He's trying to attack in this box that I said. So the main read here, at least off of initials, is we're really looking and keen on this defender. If this defender goes to the flat, then we're going to look to throw this streak. If the defender sits in the middle of the field, then we're going to, the read is now going to go out here. And if this guy drops back, this is going to be an open flat pass right here. Another thing is the user does play a factor. So let's say the user decides he's going to kind of come over here. Then we're going to be able to throw this post right when it cuts in the middle of the field. So that's kind of what's going on with this route combo. Really good double Mabel beating route combination. He is going to go with a wheel now. So if we take a look right off rip, what happens? This guy goes out, this guy goes out, and John actually cross-mans this linebacker onto the running back. But because he motioned out that flat, this purple cannot get out there. So Abram is going to do a really good job of just taking what the defense gives him and throwing it out there and getting a quick six yards. So now uh, Abram is going to go back to that RPO bubble. And look here, you see, look at all this space out here that we have to be able to attack. There's only one defender. If we get a block here and a block here, Potential that this could be a touchdown. So you see he gets out, jukes inside, able to juke back outside, and is able to actually go all the way for a touchdown on his first drive. So 
that is one of the biggest, you know, anytime you can get a touchdown like that, super helpful uh, just in terms of getting you into the overarching flow of your game plan. Uh, and now John Beast is going to be forced to answer back on offense. Now, Abram is running a little bit of a different style defense here. Abram is going to be in dime normal, and this dime normal is going to have DB Blitz 3. So what DB Blitz 3 is going to do is it's going to send pressure like this, okay? Please notice what I'm doing just at the beginning of these film rooms. We're taking a significant amount of time to explain kind of the basic mechanics of the scheme. How the blitzes are going to work with 6-1 are different than dime. How the sheds are going to work are a little bit different in dime than 6-1. So understanding where the threat of pressure is, which in this case, it's really this guy here on the left side, and then occasionally this guy will come off the right, we now can essentially, just by knowing how they're going to be sending pressure at us, we can develop route combinations that are going to take advantage of this, okay? So Abram is going to be in this dime normal, and it does look like he's kind of man-aligned. Starting out a little inside zone. Just kind of seeing, uh, you know, kind of how Abram is going to stop the run. A lot of these players in big games, they're going to run the ball in the first play just to kind of get into the flow, get into the feel of the game. Uh, another thing that Abram is doing, he's almost man aligning, it appears, or he's he's not in he's he's it's kind of an interesting defense. So here we see kind of the main pressure, and this is going to be if they're going to send five, this is how it's going to work. You see blitz, 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 and the blitz. So then from there, that is going to then dictate the, the coverage. Essentially here, we're going to get a flat zone, a 30 cloud, and then probably a deep half here. And then on the right-hand side, it looks like we're just playing essentially man-to-man -man on this back end. And you see John is going to take advantage of that. Now at this point in the year, one of the main metas that you're going to see is double flatting, utilizing these backed off 30-yard clouds to take away the deep corners and then utilizing the underneath flat defender. So you see here again, John does a good job stepping up in the pocket. And we're already starting to kind of see, okay, you can learn so much in your first drive. How is Abram, what's his primary game plan for this formation? And it would, if we just look at this just for a second, we see flat, 30-yard flat, inside quarter potential. Here, I'm not sure what this is. I think this is just man-to-man. -man. It could be that matching third. Uh, that could be what he's doing. And then when he's going to send five, he's going to send this, and he's going to kind of use her over in here, right? So pretty standard way to defend bunch. Like I said, it looks like he's almost playing like shaded down man on the solo receiver with a deep half over there, uh, but it is kind of hard to tell. And he is in default alignment, but this seems very clear to be a 30-yard cloud that he's backing off. I could be wrong on that, but you just see 10, 10. See how he just keeps drifting back? And then over here... I don't know what that is. It's got to be just a man coverage with a deep half is really what it looks like to me. So you see here now as a, as a coverage look, so we're going to send three, and we're just going to drop another yellow zone here. And then we're going to drop that flat in here. So now the user just basically defends this box. So it's kind of interesting, but here you're starting to see within the very first drive just the basic format of their offense and defensive scheme. Okay, so let's see here. Little red zone trip for John. And let's kind of see what we're looking at. So again, here one of the little underrated thing is notice that now that the bunch is over here, it changes how these guys are lined up. So Abram does have auto flip on in his defense. Again, we're seeing this backed off every single time, and we're seeing this press up every single time. So there's a couple different things that he could be doing from this, but it's kind of hard to to see uh, without seeing his is. We'll probably see it right here. So if we look to the left side here you'll kind of see this standard adjustment. So you see here we send we get a send five. One, two, three, four, five, okay? And Abram, it appears here, is going to go to a little bit more of a cross man. Now, you notice how this guy is going to follow him on the drag? This tells us that this is a man-to-man -man assignment right here. So essentially, we get a, a man up here. We get a cross man, it appears, like on the tight end. And then we have a flat a flat, and then a man up. And John reads it really well, and he's able to get into the end zone for seven. So, again, just trying to look through these little things and, like, why, you know, why asking why is so important. Uh, so here we'll see kind of what Abram goes to. Almost there was a lurk right on that first play. Kind of an interesting read there. And, again, the main thing that Abram is doing, this is kind of interesting at this point, but 
this defense still very much so works. Like this pinch crash down shed defense with a double Mabel and the user in the middle, it's hard to score on this consistently. So we're going back to that setup. We just, we ran that last drive. We're gonna go back to it and see if this is still available. So we're getting a little bit of a tendency. Notice that right here, it looks like John Beast almost mans this up. I believe this is a man up right here. So it's gonna play that a little bit better. Um, but the thing is, he actually ends up blocking the running back to kind of help with the pressure. Running back would have been wide open right here. Now what this does is it allows this route to be defended really easily, and then the user can put all of his energy into usering that post. And so you see here, Abram actually does get a completion. Had that been a KO or something later on in the year, that probably wouldn't have been completion. But in general, uh, kind of, you know, pretty good defense from John, and you're starting to kind of see some of the challenges. Now, again, I said that John is not backing, he's not backing this guy off. So what can happen is with this, with this route combo here, this crosser can potentially get over the top of a 30-yard cloud because he's not backing him up. Um, so that's kind of the reason for this combo. You see here this flat pulls this purple out of the way. Again, you're seeing, and it, 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 all he's doing is kind of mixing it up over here, but you see this, this flat is not 30, right? Just off the drop right here, you can see it's, it's really not, it doesn't look like it's gonna drop about 30 yards. You get this yellow. And then you get a man up here. This might actually be about a 30 yard, but notice this disengage. This is the most important thing. He's getting this disengage very consistently. And the reason this is significant, even though it's not a blitz, the disengage is making it so that this route combo doesn't really have time to get open all the time. And so you see really good defense from John. He's able to get him in a third and 12 situation. So third and 12, anytime you can get them in a third and 12, third and 15, fourth and 12, it's, it's a good time. Uh, now here, notice he's not pinching his defensive line, okay? He's not pinching his defensive line. This signals to me that it could be some pressure. Abram agrees he's going to block. And John actually just sends four, which is kind of an interesting little, little uh, change up here. It appears like we're going to get a third, a third, and then kind of some man-to-man -man assignments here on the left side. And not going to happen. And now we get him in a fourth and 12. Fourth and 12 is super, super good and mad. Normally you can get off the field in a fourth and 12, fourth and 15, fourth and 20. You know, it's not a great down to be on. In this game, you kind of have to go for it because of how offensive it is, though. So if John gets a stop right here, this could literally be the game. He's going to go to post wheel drag out of uh, tight slots. La I don't know about this. It's kind of an interesting route combo. Again, like... It does not take a rocket scientist to realize John's not doing anything too crazy. The blocking of the running back here is due to this uncomfortable disengage that John is consistently getting. So we'll see here this time. It does look like he tries to send a five-man pr pressure. Abram is able to pick it up pretty easily here. But we get a shed. Uh, actually, I think he might have even sent six. And all he did was basically protect the sticks or use those 30-yard clouds. And then now the user is basically sitting in the middle of the field. It looks like he manned up circle. And then that read is just so hard to make. And you're not going to be able to make that against one of the best players in, in the world by any means. So super good uh, defense from John. Okay, so now John Beast gets the opportunity to go get seven. That would be huge because he would go up by uh, one possession, but he also gets bought half. So kind of an interesting route combo. It looks like he's kind of preparing for Abram to send some pressure. He picks this up by blocking his tight end. Abram does send pressure. Now, again, we talked about this previously, but it does look like this is for sure a man up. And then it looks like this is some type of quarter or deep half. And then the user is isolated one-on-one -on -one with the running back. And then essentially on this back side, we have a double flat is, is, is pretty much the adjustments. I think this has been pretty much the adjustments the majority of the way through. It could be a quarter, could be a deep half. And you see here, going to throw that check down, get a KO. This seems to be Abrams defense. Now we're getting a back off on this side. Now he's going to press him back up. Kind of an interesting route combo. Here's the crosser. See what he's doing here. So John starts to notice that this guy is manned up. So what he's going to do is he's going to run this guy across and bring this guy across because there's no third over here to take that. So let's see how this looks. So see, look, watch the quarter. So the user has to go here. 
the user passes this off well. Now the user is going to have to make a decision. Who are we going to guard? He does a really good job, actually, with his user taking this. The scramble is going to be open, though. And John Beast is going to get some easy yardage up the middle of the field. So you're starting to kind of see, like, how they're adjusting to the adjustment. Let's see what the combo is here from John. Looks like we're going to ID this guy on the right side, maybe slide back side. And we should see drag. So now notice this. Okay, so John Beast has consistently been putting this guy on an underneath pattern. So what, what uh, Abram does is he's actually going to now put his guy in a zone. So this should defend anything coming from the bunch side across. So you see here we get a mesh. And then we have this coming over the top. But this flat should, bar should guard that. And you see we get the double flat. See that double flat to take away the high low on the right. This is a pretty good defense, pretty good adjustment from Abram. All he has to do is use her here. And this is pretty much bagged up. Now John gets some extra time and is able to buy, actually get a crazy touchdown out of that. So even though Abram really played pretty good defense, he just didn't get a shed and, uh, and didn't work out for him there. So, so John is going to go up by a touchdown, which is really big because John is going to get ball coming out of half. Super, super important. And now we're going to start to see, you know, how Abram adjusts, because Abram just coming off getting stopped. We'll see what the offense does here. And, again, you're seeing, you know, just kind of minor adjustments out of a double Mabel base. So out of that double Mabel, double Mabel base shell, John is doing little things, like he's manning up the slot receiver last play. Uh, he'll man up the tight end occasionally. He's kind of just doing those little bitty things. Here we're going to get more of a traditional flood to the right out of trail. Actually, no, not. I actually love this route combination. Uh, so what Abram is looking for here is this clear out will take away this half. And then this 30-yard cloud is never going to get deep enough to defend that post route if thrown over here. And then basically to occupy the user, we're going to run a drag to Texas. So if the user goes there, then we're going to be able to throw the ball to the Texas route right in the middle of the field. So you see here, see how this is a flat? This is a quarter, it appears. So this streak's going to clear this quarter. And you really much, you get this. So, but the crazy part, John gets a crazy disengage, gets nano detected even. But I think this is literally a three-man rush. And we have this little vert hook three rec type zone. So late, John is going to roll back to this and take this all the way across. So Abram actually has to check down to the drag and does get a really nice little route and get a nice completion, even though and it appears like John's zone drops may have been a little bit too deep for the underneath zone uh, to defend that. But anyway, so we get him, Abram going to tight slots. Abram really didn't go to tight slots much. Um, or not, not much, but like the combos are kind of, here we go. So I love this route combo right here. We'll talk a little bit about this. So this is something we still see in Madden, uh, and this is something that you're going to see for a long time. So basically the idea is we're getting this 30-yard cloud, but – because this guy's not in a third, he's in a quarter or he's in a half, we can manipulate him with a seam streak. So this seam streak is going to hold this half defender. This corner route now has a lot of space to be able to run over the top. Remember I said he's not dropping these guys back. So if you play 30 and 5, this route combo, that corner is going to be open, and then it's just about having underneath stuff to kind of hold the user in the middle of the field. So... So we'll see right here. See, literally right here, Abram knows. The user's here. Abram knows already, as long as he gets time, that's, that corner's open uh, to the right. So there's we're, we look left. That's all dead. And so now we're looking all the way back across, and we're really looking to hit this corner route. Does a really nice job, catches it, gets a big play. This is also, I believe, before set feet lead came into the game. So these windows are a little harder to throw through than, than they uh, would be you know, once set feet lead comes into the game, that's another little important piece there. RPO bubble, got it again, pretty good. Gets a couple yards out of that, see what he does in the red zone. Single back bunch tight end, power alert bubble, this is something that people do out of Jets playbook, and it should be just an instant throw to the bubble screen. Nope, he is going to hand this off. Not sure that that really worked out well. I think the bubble was kind of open. What a lot of people do is they just instantly throw this RPO. So we, we literally are going to call three straight RPOs. 6-1 is really just not equipped to, to stop the RPO. 
actually gets a crazy uh, missed tackle, and he's able to get in for six. Okay, so John B's back on offense, 327 to go in the second quarter. And really what John Beast is looking to do here from a clock management perspective is he wants to take all of this three minutes and 20 seconds. And even if he does have to settle for a field goal, John Beast is going to be getting ball coming out of half. And so the main thing here is the main objective is that we don't leave Abram any time. So he is going to do his best to basically drain all of this clock. Now, unfortunately, <laughs> um, first two plays don't really work out. He gets himself in the third and 13, and now he kind of has to pick this up. So this is kind of a critical point. This is where Abram's got the best chance to get back in this game if he gets a stop here before half. It would be critical, and he could go down and get seven and then kind of re-even the, even the playing field. So John goes to a little love this route combo. And actually, <laughs> this is crazy. So, so right here at this point, everything's covered, right? Streak covered by the third, the flats covering the running back, and then the user's covering this. Now, John does have a vert hook here that's going to guard this curl, but – or uh, Abram has a, a hook curl there. What John Beast is going to do is he's going to flick his right joystick left, which is going to playmaker this curl into this area of the field – and so you'll see right – watch Abram's user right here. Abram is anticipating that, so he comes back. So John playmakers, Abram comes back to user this, and then John wisely now takes this massive amount of space that is left available and is able to take the post and get a huge play. As you see Abram's facial expression, he knows he might have been just a little bit too early on the return over to the middle. Uh, had he waited – you know, potentially that that playmaker, you know, he could the shed could have been there a little bit better. You know, there's some things that could have went in in Abram's favor. Okay, first and ten again. Notice he's dropping that guy off that off that he's backing that guy off every single time on that bunch side, and that seems to be his kind of basic plan. Another thing you'll notice a lot of these players do, and you see John just running the ball again. He's trying to take the clock. Probably should run the ball right here in a first and ten situation. Um, but one of the things that you're noticing that these guys are consistently doing is every, it, every the defense basically looks the same every single snap. Abram has been in dime normal. He's been backing off the bunch side corner pretty much every single time. Now, he's been doing different things post-snap behind that. But in general, he's been keeping that same pre-snap picture. So you see here his defense gets a little bit misaligned. We know John's going to run the ball, able to get upfield. And that's about as perfect of a clock as you can get there. Second and two situation allows him to run the ball on second down and uh, still be in a good position. So, again, this is literally all about just trying to take Abram's timeouts, trying to make sure that Abram does not touch the ball um, before half and then allows John to come out in the second half. Here, Abram actually, I think, even switches to the nickel over or some, a little bit more of a heavy run defense. That's why John didn't score right there. That's why he went down because, again, the biggest thing and most important thing is that Abram doesn't touch the ball. Uh, that is that is the biggest, biggest thing right here. So we're going to get another run and probably another timeout from Abram, I would assume. And we're going to get to second and goal. And he should run the ball right here as well. So right there, a great example. So he goes read option. And this read option is actually crazy. But he slides down. The purpose of the slide down, again, to take all of the clock. Now, on this third and goal, it's likely that he's going to try to score. Uh, very likely that he's going to try to actually score here. You see he goes to a wing slot, which is at this point the the kind of meta red zone red zone offense here. So you see and Abram's going to stay in dime normal, but essentially let's see how he stops this. He's going to use her here, and John should be running stretch. This guy right here should blitz. Let's see what happens. Got the tight end out there. Abram even moves this guy in, move the tight end out. And you see, I mean, this is just – we're just trying to punch the ball in. I think John went with an inside run. Unfortunate. You see his facial expression. Now, the wise thing here is that John settles for three and we go to half. And I believe he does that. Let's see. Is he going to go for this? Oh, he might actually go for this. This is crazy. I would definitely kick three here. It's because you're, you're anticipating that you're probably going to come out of half and score. And he's going to dot him up. <laughs> That's actually crazy. I don't know what this zone is, but he did not zone. This looks to me like a curl flat of some sort. We got a shade outside and underneath. I have a hard flat out there. I'm not sure, but just 
you could say good route combo, glitchy, whatever, but I mean, you got to, it just doesn't look like, I don't know, maybe John knows something we don't about that little quick throw, but I haven't seen that. Um, it just appears like Abram kind of busted a coverage there and didn't have hard flats. I could be wrong. It might have, maybe he did, and we just didn't shade outside pass commit. I'm not sure. Maybe he wasn't expecting John to snap the ball there, but I'm actually shocked that John went for it uh, right there. I just didn't feel like the way the game's been played so far, he really needed to. But that's going to pretty much do it for the first half, and uh, we're going to get into the second half. All right, we're back. Second half, John Beast versus Abram, and uh, we're taking a look at this. And John is going to have the ball. So him scoring before half is huge. So now John can be a little bit more like ball control because even in this situation here, it sounds crazy, but if John gets three, I consider that a win. Why? Because it puts him up two possessions. In Madden, you're always trying to get up to up about three possessions. 17 is kind of the magic number. Once you get to 17, uh, it's really hard to come back from that. So you're going to see John run the ball and work a little bit of clock here to start out. Just kind of see one of the things that one of the things that John is kind of doing here in a high stress game, a lot of money on the line. He's trying to see if Abram is – this is really important. He's trying to see if Abram is going to give him the win by playing bad defense, undisciplined, maybe get a run. Here he's going to go to this route combo. This is kind of based off a tendency that Abram was showcasing, and we have a comeback here. The reason we're utilizing a comeback more than likely is because what John's anticipating is man-to-man -man right here. If he gets man-to-man -man there and this guy's in a half – this crosser is going to get wide open over here to the right side. He's also going to motion CMC. Uh, I think he did not mean to have that streak there, so he's going to utilize a streak wheel combo. It actually changes the whole route combo. Of course he does. Um, so we get that backside. Abram's starting to third and hard flat. Uh, that's what we're starting to see. So he was press manning. Now we're third and hard flatting. Uh, CMC wide open there to the left side. I'm going to take the drag that's covered instead. And somehow we still complete it and get the ball to about 43-yard line. All right, so again, I, I said they make it look the same. This guy backs him off every single time. That's super important just for understanding what they're doing, why they're doing it. He flips it. He's going to back this guy off, press this guy. We're making our defense look the same. Notice that Abram, and this is something that's so important. I talk about this a lot. Both of these guys have a plan of attack of how they want to beat double Mabel or how they want to defend bunch or how they want to beat the blitz, right? They have a, a pre labbed plan. And a lot of this comes down to executing it and making very small micro adjustments based off of tendency and flow of the game. But it starts with having that, you know, this is my generalized plan for attacking man coverage, zone coverage, Mabel coverage, all of that stuff. So right there, the deep end zone KO did not KO. First and 10. And John Beast, honestly, is calling kind of some interesting things, and I'm, I'm not really sure. He's freestyling a lot. Like, he really is. It's because, I mean, you can even tell from, like, his basic pace and all of that stuff. But here's the run. So why is John Beast excited that he got a first down there? Because now he can run the ball again. He can run the ball several times. Because at this point right here, John is just trying to clock the game because he basically has it. Because once you get into field goal range, as I said, you can, you can afford to kick three and be fine. So we're going to get a lot of clocking here. He isn't taking the whole clock like I thought he would. And I actually throws that, and he's going to hit that. That's an absolute dot. Nice little red zone play. This has been a good red zone play in Madden for years. John Beast actually ran this in Madden 22 when he won his belt. Dig return. Boom. Got that nice post route over the middle of the field. Super open, and he is going to go up two possessions. Two possessions is huge because now when Abram – if assuming Abram scores here, he is going to be in a position um, – why is that – oh, did he run the kickback? Or did we just miss a really fast drive? All right, I think we missed a really fast drive. Um, he's going to be in a position to basically clock the game out, and it's going to be a matter of whether or not Abram can stop the run. That's essentially what we're heading into. 6-1, we got a pinch D line, and we're going to do some motion in. This is the play flood. Love this play. Looking for that tight end over the 30. Gets a nice route, and you can't hot route that corner route. That corner route is so good because it runs so deep and gets a big play right out of the gate. Now he's going to go to 
tight slots. He's run this four verticals play a lot, a lot of different variations, but it's because these flat routes are so good. This four verticals play has been good uh, for the last three years. I anticipate it being very good in men 25 as well. But essentially here we're going to go to corner strike. Um, I think we're calling this for the C route on the left side. Let's see if he shows the combo here. There it is. Okay, so, oh, we're not. We're kind of freestyling. Uh, why call this play? I'm honestly not sure. I would assume we're looking to hit this flat if the, if the linebacker can't get out. And then if the linebacker does sprint out, we're going to pull this flat to the sideline, and we're going to try to throw that corner route right in there. If the user goes right, we're going to throw the drag right in that little window. So we're probably reading flat to corner. So we look out here. Okay, that's taken away. He throws it anyway. And he gets a completion. There you go. <laughs> this is proof that the best players in the world misreads. This is proof that, you know, you're, you're not going to execute with perfection every single time. Uh, but uh, these pro players, they execute with perfection the majority of the time. You see there's the wheel route wide open, good read. John not able to get it done. And so now Abram is going to need to stop, basically. And John's going to run the ball. We got about four. Four, about four and a half minutes left in the game. So John runs the ball right here. He's taking it all the way to the end of the quarter. We're going to the fourth quarter. You don't even have to think about it. This should be fourth quarter. Yep, five minutes. So we have five minutes left in this game. Realistically, Abram needs a stop right here. And he, if, if John gets to here, mathematically, it's going to be very difficult for Abram to win this game. So love this route come. This is a smash return. Now what's the combo? What are we trying to accomplish? I'm not sure why John is doing this per se. I think it's a shot play in anticipation that Abram is going to fall asleep. But essentially, we're going to go corner route and then skinny post because there's been a half here. That those halves will go outside, and that skinny post will be open for a touchdown. I'm just not sure why, why we call that play at that time. But you see here, it's, it's exactly what John wants. I mean, look, see how he's going to the wheel route? See how he's going to the corner route? He just gets shedded. He's throwing a big dot and uh, just gets shedded, unfortunately. All right, third and nine, kind of a got to have it down for Abram. You're going to get his best defense here. You're going to get his best stuff. Probably a really aggressive play call. Notice when he gets aggressive, he's manning this guy up consistently. That's the main thing. John's going to go right back to this bomb. Try to pick up the blitz. Only a three-man rush. So now Abram adjusts, middle third. This is probably an outside third. Could be it. No, it looks like it's man coverage. Okay, that's crazy. So this is super smart. Okay. So Abram adjusts to what John is doing because he t instead of a half, this guy becomes a middle third. The problem is he leaves this manned up. So what happens is there's no third that's going to take away that wheel route. So essentially, as John is reading this, oh, there's a middle third defender. Oh, this guy is in a flat. Now, I would expect this guy to be in a third. But if he waits on it just a little bit more, notice that this guy goes inside – and the user is sprinting, you know, for all, you know, all hope that's left in this world to get back there. So he's a step behind. I don't know why the user bit down there, but John is going to throw that and get a huge play. And that pretty much is going to put him in, in full clock mode. You're going to see a lot of runs here. And essentially, we're just trying to clock this out because the field goal doesn't hurt John. Uh, Basically, we're just trying to take as much clock. So second and ones is what we really like here. You're trying to get yourself in a second and three, second and two, second and one, not trying to score. If you break a, break a run, ideally you want to go down so that it's second and one. Now, here, uh, Abram actually gets a nice shoot, and now it's third and four. And so we're kind of a, you know, in an ideal world here, we get a first down. So you're probably going to see John pass. And if he doesn't get it, he's going to go smash return. Love this combo. This is so good every year. Spaces the field really well. Abram reads it. He's taking the post. Tight ends wide open. Easy read. Catch the ball. And you're going to get a first down. And now we're going to get more clock. Uh, again, more runs. You see he's got two clock on. Interesting to me that John's not taking it all the way down. It really is kind of interesting because uh, John will later talk about how important it is to take all of the clock. See second and, and 29 here or second and, and nine, I apologize, 29 seconds left. And that's going to take us to the two-minute warning, third and ten situation. Now, you might see John pass here. Honestly, 
yeah, I mean, you probably pass here, try to get seven, try to get – in a perfect world, you get a first down and you don't get actually a seven but because uh, then you can really take the clock. Love this combo. P.A. Reed, this is a great route combo. We have this flat. We, he can high point this right now. Curl, that's going to sit in case they're Mabeling. And then we have a ghost route right here. This ghost route is going to pull this defender to the numbers. As you see, see how he's on the numbers right here? Pulls him to the numbers. So now the user is choosing between this guy and this guy. So you see here, the user chooses this defender or this receiver. So then that post is going to get over the top of it. He actually is even late to get that. The reason John took that route is exactly what you see. He's going to be able to get a first down. And now, um, this is just, I mean, John played a pretty clean game here. Actually, unfortunately, ends up falling into the end zone. But, you know, does just, I mean, that's perfect for John. Goes up two possessions, a minute 50, and now we're going to see Abram essentially need to go score and get an onside. That's kind of where Abram's at here. He has to get an onside kick. And all of this is literally happening because Abram got stopped one time. Uh, that is how critical every drive is that is how critical mistakes are in this game and all of this is really happening because ultimately John B's got a disengage on 6-1 which is why you run 6-1 for these disengages for the uncomfortability and for the fact that it can kind of simulate a, a blitz but you're only sending four all right gonna go to I think Durham use a crosser almost lurked him Trying to get out of bounds. Does get out of bounds. And you see here, now John's playing a little bit more basic. This is a bomb threat. So John's just going to run right to it. Really nice user. That should be a pick. And it's actually going to end up being a touchdown. <laughs> That's crazy. Um, so Abram kind of gets a nice little catch there. Should have been a pick going for the onside. This is really ultimately what he needs. Gets a bad kick. And now John's got it. All he's got to do is run the, run the clock out. Now, Abram uh, is – he does have timeouts. So, you know, you're going to probably have to pass for one first down. So, you might you – might, you might, this is why you pass on second and 12 here. So, the reason that John is passing on this second and 12 is because it's unlikely you're going to run the ball for 12 yards. You know you need a first down to win the game, and you know you can only stop once, stop the clock one more time. By, ca by calling a pass play on second and 12, it's very likely Abram could be setting up run defense – so he's got a nice corner route, post, streak, and then a really safe route combo. He's only sending four out, and he's really looking. You see here we get just heavy man coverage across the board. And actually, pretty good, and we get a KO. All right, so now we're third and 12. So now this is an obvious passing situation. This is the entire game. Again, Abram's in a position where we get potentially a stop. But what did he do? What has he been doing all game? Super important. Literally all game. There has been a man-to-man -man defender on this solo wide receiver. All game long. So what's John Beast going to do for the bread? He is going to... Or maybe it's the next play. Maybe it's not this play. Okay. So here we just get a standard double flat. So once you see this right here, I mean, it's almost obvious, like... Okay, I need to either throw the running back or, or scramble. So you see how John's stepping up, right? Because he's trying to threaten a scramble. So essentially right now, this route's dead. You're not throwing that. You're not throwing that. The only read that John has here is the user, can I take off with my quarterback? So you see here, see how he playmakers? It's a great playmaker. So the user has to go with him. And John is going to throw it, and he's going to catch it and get a big play. There you go, first and ten. And I think that's going to do it. I don't know if – oh, that's about it. So I guess it was a, earlier in the game that he did that. But essentially that man-up that Abram was doing on the solo side, John started to catch on to that and uh, basically started to exploit it with different route combinations. So, anyways, GG's to John Beast. Thanks for watching, guys. Hope you enjoyed the breakdown.